Hello and welcome to EuroPCR 2024. I'm Chris Cook and I'm delighted to be joined live here with Patrick Sirois. And we're going to be discussing the exciting late-breaking clinical trial data that you've just presented on the landmark RCT. So let's jump straight in and tell me, what is the landmark study all about? Good, I mean, uh, you know, the Sapien and the Evolute as the standard and uh, the MyValve is a newcomer and he doesn't want to be a me too. He wants to say, I'm pretty good. So it's a randomized trial, uh, one to one with the MyValve and the, what we call the contemporary valve. And it was an inferiority, well done. I have the blessing of David Capodano, so he put me a green everywhere in all the... So it's well done, uh, and it shows a non-inferiority, minus 2.3% with the 95% confidence interval, etc., etc. So that's non-inferior. What was tough in this trial is, of course, the COVID and other things, but the fact that we applied the VAR3. Maybe you don't know, but in the VAR3 there is 18 table. There is 94 I attempt to look at. In my entire career, I've never had more adjudication than patient. So good luck for the people who are going to do the next trial head to head with the VAR3. Uh, beyond this non-inferiority, which is important on, on seven parameter, mortality, PVL, uh, pacemaker of uh, the VAR3, uh, what was interesting is that uh, we, when we look at the effective orifice area of the tree valve, uh, we see clearly a significant benefit of the my valve on the versus the sapien, and some, at least in the 26 and 29, the same value of effective orifice area. So the question for the future, because we will have 10 years of follow-up, is uh, are we going to see some extra durability? Are we going to see good long-term outcomes? That's the question for the future. Absolutely. So this is 30-day data at this yeah, stage. 30-day data. But you've already just confirmed there's a commitment yeah. to study out to 10 years. Fantastic. And a big question that we often ask in these types of TAVI trials is, was there any difference in pacemaker rates between the, yeah, the two Yeah, before arms? talking about the pacemaker rate, which is basically uh, uh, 15 and, and, uh, and 17, so there is no difference, uh, what is important is that that valve introduced the concept of intermediate size. It's a step of 1.5 millimeter between all the sizes. So you know the dilemma we have always in the cat lab, do I take a big one or a small one? I'm going to be undersized, oversized, that's resolved. And if you look in, around the world, there's a lot of registry in India and in Europe, and, and in the trial, 48% adopt this intermediate size. So it's really, it was an unmet need. And we have a fitting index showing that the valve fit much better to the anatomy of the patient on an individual basis. And it start to have some impact in the fitting region, some impact on the pacemaker and other things. So it, I think it's a step forward. And I think it will be quickly embraced by the community Spontaneously, it was the case. Now in the randomized trial, you know, when something is new in a randomized trial, you don't do, no, for, spontaneously 48% of intermediate. So I think it's, it's a good step forward. Maybe it will be copied. So thanks very much for providing that really fantastic insight into the landmark study. So there you have it, exciting new data for us as clinicians, but also more importantly, of course, for our patients. Thank you for watching.